Chapter 1 The Daily Grind The fluorescent lights flickered overhead as James shuffled into his cramped cubicle, his worn-out briefcase clutched tightly in hand. The smell of stale coffee lingered in the air, mixing with the faint hum of the office's air conditioning system. With heavy sigh, he sank into his creaky office chair, bracing himself for another day under Mark's relentless scrutiny. Morning, James, greeted Sarah, the office receptionist, with a sympathetic smile as he passed by her desk. Morning, Sarah, James replied, forcing a smile in return, though the weight of his impending workload weighed heavily on his shoulders. As he booted up his computer, James couldn't shake the sinking feeling in the pit of his stomach. He knew what awaited him, a barrage of menial tasks and condescending remarks from Mark, his overbearing department head. James, I need those reports on my desk by noon. Mark barked from across the room, his tone laced with disdain as he glanced over his glasses. Yes, sir, James muttered, suppressing the urge to roll his eyes. He had grown accustomed to Mark's abrasive demeanor, but it still grated on his nerves. Throughout the day, James twirled away at his desk, his fingers flying across the keyboard as he typed up endless spreadsheets and memos. Each time he glanced up, he met Mark's cold gaze, a constant reminder of his subordinate status within the company hierarchy. As the hours dragged on, James couldn't help but wonder if this was all there was to life. Was he destined to spend his days trapped in this soul-crushing cycle of monotony? Hey James, you look like you could use a break, remarked Tom, his cubicle neighbor with a sympathetic grin. Want to grab lunch together? James hesitated for a moment before nodding gratefully. A small reprieve from the daily grind was just what he needed to lift his spirits. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it, James replied, a flicker of hope igniting within him. Maybe just maybe there was a light at the end of the tunnel after all. Chapter 2. Dinner Conversations The soft glow of the dining room chandelier cast a warm ambience over the table as James and Laura sat down for dinner. Emma, their daughter, chattered excitedly about her day at school, her youthful enthusiasm a welcome distraction from the challenges of James's work life. So, how was work today, honey? Laura asked, her gentle voice filled with concern as she glanced at James across the table. James hesitated, debating whether to divulge the full extent of his struggles at the office. He didn't want to burden Laura with the details of his mistreatment by Mark, yet he longed for her understanding and support. It was challenging, James admitted reluctantly, avoiding Laura's gaze as he stirred his fork through his meal. Mark was on my case again, as usual. Laura reached out to gently squeeze his hand, her expression a mix of sympathy and determination. I'm sorry, James, you don't deserve to be treated like that. James managed a weak smile, grateful for Laura's unwavering support. Thanks, Laura. I'll get through it, somehow. As Emery gilded them with tales of her latest school project, James found solace in the warmth of his family's love. Despite the hardships he faced at work, he knew he had a safe haven in Laura and Emma, a sanctuary where he could find refuge from the daily grind. Hey, Dad, can we play a board game after dinner? Emma asked, her eyes sparkling with excitement. James glanced at Laura, a silent question passing between them. Despite the weight of his troubles, he couldn't resist the chance to spend quality time with his daughter. Of course, sweetheart, James replied with a smile, his heart swelling with love for his family. I'd love that. Chapter 3. The Anniversary Party The grand ballroom of the company's headquarters was adorned with sparkling decorations and bustling with excitement as employees and their guests mingled in celebration of the company's anniversary. James and Laura arrived hand in hand, their anticipation tinged with apprehension after Jennifer's humiliating behavior at the last company event. Try to relax, James, Laura whispered, her voice soothing as she squeezed his hand reassuringly. We're here to enjoy ourselves. James nodded, though his nerves remained on edge as they made their way through the crowd. He couldn't shake the memory of Jennifer's mocking laughter echoing in his mind, a painful reminder of the mistreatment he endured at work. As they greeted colleagues and exchanged pleasantries, James couldn't help but feel a sense of unease lurking beneath the festive atmosphere. He scanned the room anxiously, half expecting Jennifer to appear and resume her taunting. James, look, Laura whispered her voice tinged with concern as she nodded towards a group of familiar faces across the room. James followed her gaze and felt his stomach churn as he spotted Jennifer among the group, her laughter ringing out like a discordant melody amidst the joyful chatter. Let's steer clear of them, Laura suggested, her protective instincts kicking in as she guided James towards the refreshment table. Just as James began to relax slightly, he felt a tap on his shoulder, and he turned to find himself face to face with Jennifer 
her smirk sending a shiver down his spine. Well, well, if it isn't our resident office punching bag, Jennifer taunted, her tone dripping with sarcasm as she glanced pointedly at James. James clenched his jaw, struggling to maintain his composure in the face of Jennifer's latent hostility. He felt Laura's hand tighten around his arm, her silent support lending him strength. Jennifer, that's enough, Laura interjected, her voice firm as she stepped forward to confront their tormentor. James doesn't deserve to be treated like this, and you know it. Jennifer's eyes narrowed, her expression shifting from amusement to annoyance as she regarded Laura with disdain. Oh, please, spare me the righteous indignation, Laura. You're just as much of a doormat as your pathetic husband. James felt a surge of anger bubble up inside him at Jennifer's callous words, but before he could respond, Laura cut in with a steely glare. Say what you want about me, Jennifer, but leave James out of it, Laura retorted, her voice unwavering as she stood her ground. He's a good man who doesn't deserve your cruelty. As the tension between them escalated, James felt a mixture of gratitude and admiration wash over him. Despite the discomfort of the situation, he knew he was fortunate to have Laura by his side, a beacon of strength and support in the face of adversity. Chapter 4. Laura's Revelation The evening air was heavy with tension as James and Laura returned home from the anniversary party, the memory of Jennifer's taunts still fresh in their minds. Laura paced anxiously in the living room, her brow furrowed with worry as she struggled to find the right words. James, we need to talk, Laura began, her voice trembling slightly as she turned to face him. James could sense the gravity of her tone and felt a knot form in his stomach as he met her gaze. He braced himself for what he knew would be a difficult conversation. What is it, Laura? James asked, his voice gentle as he reached out to grasp her hand in reassurance. Laura took a deep breath, stealing herself for what she was about to reveal. I couldn't stand by and watch Jennifer treat you like that anymore, James, she confessed, her voice tinged with regret. I had to confront her about it. James felt a surge of surprise at Laura's revelation, his heart swelling with gratitude for her unwavering support. Laura, you didn't have to do that, he insisted, his voice filled with emotion. I know how hard it must have been for you. Laura shook her head, her eyes shining with determination. No, James, I couldn't just stand by and let her belittle you like that, she declared, her voice firm. You deserve so much better, and I won't let anyone treat you with anything less than respect. James felt a lump form in his throat as he listened to Laura's words, overwhelmed by the depth of her love and devotion. Thank you, Laura, he whispered, his voice choked with emotion. You have no idea how much your support means to me. As they embraced in the quiet of their living room, James knew that no matter what challenges lay ahead, he could face them with Laura by his side. Together, they would weather the storms of life and emerge stronger than ever, bound together by a love that knew no bounds. Chapter 5. Confrontation The following day at the office, a palpable tension hung in the air as James and Laura braced themselves for the confrontation they knew was inevitable. Laura's resolve was unwavering, as she marched alongside James, her hand clasped tightly in his, as they made their way towards Mark's office. As they reached the door, James took a deep breath, steeling himself for the confrontation at head. With a determined nod to Laura, he knocked firmly on the door, the sound echoing through the silent hallway. Come in and called Mark's voice from within, his tone curt and businesslike. James pushed open the door, Laura by his side, and stepped into the office, his heart pounding in his chest. Mark looked up from his desk, his expression a mix of surprise and annoyance as he saw them enter. What do you want? Mark demanded, his tone brusque as he glared at James and Laura. We need to talk, Mark, James replied, his voice steady despite the nerves churning in his stomach. About your treatment of me in the workplace, Mark scoffed, rolling his eyes in disdain. Oh, please, don't tell me you're still hung up on that, he retorted, his voice dripping with sarcasm. We're here to argue, Mark, Laura interjected, her voice firm as she stepped forward to confront him. We're here to demand an explanation for your behavior towards James. Mark's eyes narrowed, his expression darkening with anger as he regarded Laura with contempt. And who do you think you are, marging in here and telling you what to do? He sneered, his voice laced with hostility. Laura stood her ground, undeterred by Mark's aggressive demeanor. I'm his wife, she replied, her voice unwavering as she met Mark's gaze head-on. And I won't stand idly by while you mistreat him. James felt a surge of pride swell within him as he watched Laura confront Mark with such courage and determination. Despite the fear gnawing at his insides, he knew he was not alone in this battle. Enough, 
James declared, his voice resonating with authority as he stepped forward to address Mark directly. We're not asking for your sympathy, Mark. We're demanding your respect. And if you can't give us that, then we'll take our concerns to someone who will. Mark's face contorted with rage at James's words, his fists clenched tightly at his sides. For a moment, the room was filled with tense silence, the air heavy with the weight of their confrontation. Finally, with a dismissive wave of his hand, Mark conceded defeat. Fine, he spat, his voice dripping with venom. Have it your way. But don't expect me to make things easy for you. As James and Laura turned to leave the office, their heads held high. They knew that the road ahead would be fraught with challenges. But they also knew that together, they could face whatever obstacles came their way, their bond stronger than ever in the face of adversity. Chapter 6. The Ripple Effect The news of James and Laura's confrontation with Mark spread like wildfire through the office, igniting a wave of speculation and gossip among the employees. As James and Laura returned to their respected workspaces, they were met with a mixture of sympathetic glances and curious whispers. Sarah, the office receptionist, approached James with a concerned expression etched on her face. Hey James, are you okay? She asked softly, her voice filled with genuine concern. James offered her a grateful smile, touched by her kindness. I'm hanging in there, Sarah, he replied, his tone tinged with exhaustion. Thanks for asking. Meanwhile, Tom, James's cubicle neighbor, leaned over the partition with a supportive nod. You did the right thing, James, he reassured him, his voice filled with admiration. We got your back. James felt a swell of gratitude wash over him as he realized the impact of his and Laura's actions. Despite the fear and uncertainty that lingered in the air, he knew that he was not alone in this fight. Throughout the day, whispers of solidarity echoed through the office as colleagues banded together in support of James and Laura. Some expressed outrage at Mark's behavior, while others voiced their admiration for James's courage in standing up for himself. As the day drew to a close, James reflected on the ripple effect of their confrontation with Mark. Though the road ahead remained uncertain, he took comfort in knowing that he had a community of colleagues who stood by him, ready to lend their support in the face of adversity. With renewed determination, James bowed to press forward, knowing that together, they could enact positive change within the workplace. As he glanced at Laura across the office, a sense of pride swelled within him, grateful for the unwavering support of his wife and their colleagues. Chapter 7. A New Resolve as the days passed following the confrontation with Mark, James found himself filled with a newfound sense of determination. The support from his colleagues and the unwavering love of Laura and Emma bolstered his spirits, propelling him forward with renewed resolve. One morning, as James settled into his desk, he found himself approached by Tom, his cubicle neighbor, wearing a determined expression. James, I've been thinking, Tom began, his voice earnest as he leaned in closer. We can't let Mark's behavior go unchecked. We need to take action. James nodded, his interest piqued by Tom's suggestion. What do you have in mind? He asked, eager to hear his colleagues' ideas. I think we should gather a group of employees to address our concerns with upper management, Tom proposed, his eyes alight with conviction. We need to make it clear that Mark's behavior is unacceptable and that we won't stand for it any longer. James felt a surge of excitement at the prospect of enacting real change within the company. I'm in, he declared, his voice resolute as he clasped Tom's hand in agreement. Let's do this. Together, James and Tom began rallying their co-workers, spreading the word of their plan for action. As they garnered support from colleagues across the office, the momentum continued to build, with each person adding their voice to the chorus of discontent. Meanwhile, Laura stood by James's side, offering unwavering support and encouragement as he pursued justice in the workplace. I'm so proud of you, James, she whispered, her eyes shining with admiration. You're making a real difference. With each passing day, James felt a sense of purpose guiding him forward, fueled by the knowledge that he was standing up not only for himself, but for the entire office community. As he prepared to confront upper management with their grievances, he knew that the road ahead would be challenging, but he was ready to face it head-on, armed with a newfound sense of resilience and determination. Chapter 8. Mark's Downfall the atmosphere in the office was charged with anticipation as James and his colleagues gathered for the long-awaited meeting with upper management to address their grievances against Mark. James could feel the tension crackling in the air as he exchanged nervous glances with Tom and the others. As they filed into the conference room, James took a deep breath, steeling himself for what was to come. Laura's supportive presence at his side gave him strength, her hand clasped tightly in his as they faced the daunting task ahead. 
Mr. Thompson, the company president, sat at the head of the table, his expression grave as he listened to James and his colleagues outline their concerns about Mark's behavior. James spoke with conviction, his voice steady as he detailed the instances of mistreatment and disrespect they had endured. I can assure you, Mr. Thompson, that this behavior is not isolated, James declared, his eyes meeting Mr. Thompson's with unwavering resolve. It's time for action to be taken. As James finished speaking, a heavy silence descended upon the room, each person waiting with bated breath for Mr. Thompson's response. After a moment of contemplation, Mr. Thompson spoke, his voice measured but firm. Thank you for bringing this to my attention, James, Mr. Thompson said, his tone conveying a sense of gravity. I will conduct a thorough investigation into these allegations and take appropriate action. As the meeting drew to a close, James and his colleagues exchanged relieved glances, their hearts buoyed by the prospect of justice finally being served. However, their relief was short-lived as Mark entered the conference room, his expression a mix of defiance and resignation. What's going on here? Mark demanded, his voice tinged with anger as he surveyed the scene before him. You know exactly what's going on, Mark, Laura interjected, her voice cutting through the tension like a knife. Your mistreatment of James and others ends now. Mark's face contorted with rage at Laura's words, his fists clenched tightly at his sides. You have no right to accuse me of anything, he spat, his voice dripping with venom. I won't stand for this. But Mr. Thompson intervened, his voice commanding attention as he addressed Mark directly. Mark, I've heard enough, he said, his tone unwavering. Your behavior towards your colleagues is unacceptable, and as a result I have no choice but to demote you from your position as department head. A stunned silence filled the room as Mark processed Mr. Thompson's words, his face pale with shock. It was a moment of reckoning, the culmination of weeks of mistreatment and injustice finally catching up with him. As James and his colleagues watched, a sense of vindication washed over them, knowing that their courage in speaking out had led to Mark's downfall. Chapter 9. Jennifer's Reflection In the aftermath of Mark's demotion, the office buzzed with a mixture of relief and apprehension. While James and his colleagues celebrated the end of Mark's reign of mistreatment, there lingered a sense of unease about what would come next. Amidst the whirlwind of emotions, Jennifer found herself grappling with her own feelings of guilt and remorse. As she sat at her desk, her mind weighed heavy with thoughts of her past actions and the role she had played in perpetuating a toxic work environment. Sarah, who sat nearby, noticed Jennifer's somber demeanor and approached her with a sympathetic smile. Hey Jennifer, are you okay? She asked gently, her voice filled with concern. Jennifer hesitated, unsure of how to articulate the tumultuous thoughts swirling in her mind. I don't know, Sarah, she admitted, her voice tinged with regret. I can't stop thinking about everything that's happened. Sarah nodded understandingly, her expression empathetic. It's been a rough time for everyone, she acknowledged, her tone gentle. But then it's also a chance for us to reflect on how we can do better. Jennifer's brow furrowed as she considered Sarah's words, a pang of guilt gnawing at her conscience. I know I haven't always been the best person, she confessed, her voice tinged with remorse. I've said and done things that I'm not proud of. Sarah offered her a reassuring smile, her eyes filled with understanding. We've all made mistakes, Jennifer, she reassured her. But what matters now is how we choose to move forward. As Jennifer contemplated Sarah's words, a sense of determination began to stir within her. She realized that she had a responsibility to do better, not only for herself, but for the sake of her colleagues and the office community as a whole. With newfound resolve, Jennifer made a silent vow to strive for kindness and empathy in her interactions with others. Though the road to redemption would not be easy, she knew that every small step forward brought her closer to becoming the person she wanted to be. As she returned to her work, Jennifer felt a glimmer of hope flicker within her heart. It was a new beginning, a chance to rewrite the narrative and forge a path towards a brighter future for herself and those around her. And with each passing day, she would strive to honor that promise, one step at a time. Chapter 10. Healing Wounds In the aftermath of Mark's demotion and Jennifer's reflection, a sense of healing began to permeate the office environment. Colleagues who had once been at odds with each other now found themselves extending olive branches and offering words of reconciliation. One morning, as James settled into his desk, he was approached by Mark, who wore a sheepish expression on his face. James, can we talk? Mark asked tentatively, his voice laced with humility. James regarded him with a mixture of surprise and curiosity, nodding in agreement. Of course, Mark, he replied, gesturing for him to take a seat. Mark took a deep breath, 
his gaze fixed on his hands as he spoke. I want to apologize for the way I treated you, he began, his voice tinged with regret. I was out of line, and I'm truly sorry. James felt a wave of empathy wash over him as he listened to Mark's sincere apology. Thank you, Mark, he replied, his voice gentle. I appreciate your honesty. As they spoke, James sensed a shift in the dynamic between them, a newfound sense of understanding and mutual respect blossoming from their conversation. Though their relationship had been strained in the past, James felt hopeful that they could move forward with a sense of reconciliation and forgiveness. Meanwhile, Laura found herself engaged in a heartfelt conversation with Jennifer, who sought her out during a break in the day. Laura, I wanted to apologize for my behavior towards James, Jennifer began, her voice filled with remorse. I know I've caused a lot of pain, and I want to make things right. Laura regarded her with warmth and compassion, her heart softened by Jennifer's humility. Thank you, Jennifer, she replied, her voice gentle. I believe in second chances, and I know that we can all learn and grow from our mistakes. As they spoke, Laura felt a sense of closure wash over her, a weight lifting from her shoulders as she extended forgiveness to Jennifer. Though their interactions had been fraught with tension in the past, Laura felt hopeful that they could forge a new path forward based on mutual respect and understanding. As the day drew to a close, James and Laura reflected on the healing that had taken place within the office community. The wounds had been inflicted. They knew that with time and patience, they could mend the rifts that had once divided them. And as they looked towards the future, they felt a sense of optimism for the journey ahead, knowing that together, they could build a workplace culture rooted in compassion, empathy. Chapter 11 Mr. Thompson's Apology The office hummed with anticipation as Mr. Thompson, the company president, called for a special meeting to address the recent upheaval within the company. James, Laura, and their colleagues gathered in the conference room, their eyes fixed on Mr. Thompson as he took his place at the head of the table. Thank you all for being here, Mr. Thompson began, his voice somber as he surveyed the room. I wanted to take this opportunity to address the events of the past few weeks and offer my sincerest apologies. James exchanged a surprised glance with Laura, his curiosity piqued by Mr. Thompson's unexpected apology. As they listened, Mr. Thompson recounted the mistakes he had made as a leader, acknowledging his role in allowing a toxic work environment to fester under his watch. I realize now that I have failed you all, Mr. Thompson continued, his voice tinged with regret. I allowed my own pride and complacency to blind me to the suffering of my employees, and for that I am truly sorry. Laura felt a surge of empathy wash over her as she listened to Mr. Thompson's heartfelt apology. Though she had harbored doubts about his leadership in the past, she couldn't help but admire his humility in owning up to his mistakes. As the meeting drew to a close, Mr. Thompson turned to James and Laura, his expression earnest. James, Laura, I owe you both a special debt of gratitude, he said, his voice filled with sincerity. Your courage in speaking out against injustice has forced me to confront my own failings as a leader, and for that I am grateful. James and Laura exchanged a surprised glance touched by Mr. Thompson's words of appreciation. Thank you, Mr. Thompson, James replied, his voice filled with emotion. We only wanted to make a positive change within the company. Mr. Thompson nodded, a sense of determination shining in his eyes, and you have, he declared, his voice firm. From this day forward, I vow to do everything in my power to create a workplace culture built on trust, respect, and equality. As James, Laura, and their colleagues filed out of the conference room, a sense of optimism filled the air. Though challenges still lay ahead, they knew that with Mr. Thompson's newfound commitment to change, they could build a brighter future together. And as they returned to their desks, they felt a renewed sense of purpose guiding them forward, united in their quest to create a workplace where everyone felt valued, heard, and respected. Chapter 12. Closure and Reconciliation In the days following Mr. Thompson's apology, a palpable sense of healing descended upon the office. Colleagues who had once been divided by strife now came together with a newfound spirit of unity and reconciliation. One afternoon, as James worked diligently at his desk, he was approached by Mark, who wore a hesitant expression on his face. James, can we talk? Mark asked tentatively, his voice tinged with uncertainty. James regarded him with a mixture of surprise and curiosity, nodding in agreement. Of course, Mark, he replied, gesturing for him to take a seat. Mark took a deep breath his gaze fixed on James with a sense of remorse. I wanted to apologize again for the way I treated you, he began, his voice filled with sincerity. I know I can't undo the past, but I want you to know that I'm committed to being better. 
James felt a swell of empathy wash over him as he listened to Mark's heartfelt apology. Thank you, Mark, he replied, his voice gentle. I believe in second chances, and I'm willing to forgive you. As they spoke, James sensed a weight lifting from his shoulders, a sense of closure washing over him, as he extended forgiveness to Mark. Though their relationship had been strained in the past, James felt hopeful that they could move forward with a sense of reconciliation and understanding. Meanwhile, Laura found herself engaged in a heartfelt conversation with Jennifer, who sought her out in the break room. Laura, I wanted to apologize again for my past behavior, Jennifer began, her voice filled with humility. I know I caused a lot of pain, and I want to make things right. Laura regarded her with warmth and compassion, her heart softened by Jennifer's sincerity. Thank you, Jennifer, she replied, her voice gentle. I believe in redemption, and I'm willing to give you another chance. As they spoke, Laura felt a sense of closure wash over her, a sense of peace settling within her heart as she extended forgiveness to Jennifer. Though their interactions had been fraught with tension in the past, Laura felt hopeful that they could forge a new path forward based on mutual respect and understanding. As the day drew to a close, James and Laura reflected on the closure and reconciliation that had taken place within the office community. The wounds had been inflicted, they knew that with time and effort, they could rebuild trust and foster a culture of compassion. Chapter 13, Moving Forward With the wounds of the past finally beginning to heal, the office community embraced a newfound sense of unity and purpose. As colleagues came together to support one another and forge connections built on trust and respect, a tangible spirit of optimism filled the air. One morning, as James and Laura settled in their desks, they found themselves approached by Sarah, who wore a bright smile on her face. James, Laura, I wanted to thank you both for everything you've done, she began, her voice filled with gratitude. Your courage and resilience have inspired us all to strive for a better workplace. James and Laura exchanged a glance, touched by Sarah's words of appreciation. Thank you, Sarah, James replied, his voice filled with warmth. We couldn't have done it without the support of our colleagues. As they spoke, James and Laura felt a sense of pride swell within them grateful for the opportunity to make a positive impact within the office community. Though the road to healing had been fraught with challenges, they knew that together, they could build a brighter future for themselves and their colleagues. Meanwhile, Tom, James's cubicle neighbor, approached him with a determined expression on his face. James, I've been thinking, Tom began, his voice tinged with excitement. Now that we've addressed the issues with Mark, I think it's time for us to focus on the future. James regarded him with interest eager to hear his colleagues' ideas. What do you have in mind, Tom? He asked, his curiosity piqued. I think we should start a mentorship program within the office, Tom proposed, his eyes shining with enthusiasm. We can pair experienced employees with newer hires to help them navigate their roles and foster a sense of camaraderie within the team. James felt a surge of excitement at the prospect of implementing Tom's idea. That's a fantastic idea, Tom, he replied, his voice filled with enthusiasm. I'll bring it up at the next team meeting and see if we can get the ball rolling. As they spoke, James and Tom felt a sense of anticipation building within them, eager to embark on this new chapter of growth and development within the office community. With their shared vision for the future, they knew that together, they could create a workplace where everyone felt supported, empowered, and valued. As the day unfolded, James and Laura found themselves filled with a sense of hope for the journey ahead. Though challenges would undoubtedly arise, they knew that with the support of their colleagues and a shared commitment to progress, they could move forward with confidence, knowing that the best was yet to come. Chapter 14, A Brighter Future As the days turned into weeks and the weeks into months, a remarkable transformation took place within the office community. Gone were the days of discord and strife, replaced instead by a renewed sense of camaraderie and purpose. One sunny afternoon, James and Laura found themselves gathered with their colleagues in the office's communal area celebrating the successful implementation of the mentorship program. Laughter and conversation filled the air as colleagues shared stories and forged connections, united in their shared goal of fostering growth and development within the team. It's amazing to see how far we've come, Laura remarked, her eyes sparkling with pride as she surveyed the scene before her. I never would have imagined that we could create such positive change within the office. James nodded in agreement, a sense of satisfaction warming his heart. It just goes to show what we can accomplish when we work together, he replied, his voice filled with gratitude. I'm proud of each and every one of us for embracing this journey of growth and transformation. As they spoke, James and Laura found themselves approached by Mr. Thompson, 
who wore a smile of satisfaction on his face. James, Laura, I wanted to personally thank you both for your contributions to the office community, he began, his voice filled with sincerity. Your dedication and leadership have truly made a difference. James and Laura exchanged a glance, touched by Mr. Thompson's words of appreciation. Thank you, Mr. Thompson, Laura replied, her voice filled with warmth. It's been an honor to be a part of this journey. Mr. Thompson nodded, a sense of pride evident in his expression. I have no doubt that the future of this office is bright, he declared, his voice ringing with optimism. With your continued dedication and teamwork, I know that we can achieve great things together. As the celebration continued, James and Laura felt a sense of hope and excitement for the journey ahead. Though challenges would undoubtedly arise, they knew that with the support of their colleagues and a shared commitment to progress, they could overcome any obstacle and build a workplace where everyone felt valued, respected, and empowered.